welcome everybody to our program this morning, Understanding Scleroderma. I'm Jane, I'm a nurse and one of the arthritis educators for Arthritis New Zealand. So what we will do today is touch on these areas in relation to scleroderma. So what is it? Who's affected by this condition and why? Common symptoms, how scleroderma is diagnosed, the medical management, self-management, some tips from a lived experience, and of course, more information and support opportunities. So scleroderma uh, literally means hard skin. This condition is a rare, often progressive autoimmune condition. Autoimmune also meaning the body's immune system attacks its own tissues. So scleroderma affects the connective tissues of the body. Connective tissues are the tissues that hold together the muscles, joints, blood vessels and internal organs. But in scleroderma, there's too much of a protein called collagen. Collagen normally gives connective tissue its strength, but too much causes hardening and tightening of the affected area. There are two main types of scleroderma. The localized type, which often happens in childhood, affects the skin and sometimes the underlying tissues like muscles. Systemic scleroderma affects women particularly, usually between the ages of 25 to 55 years of age, and it can affect other parts of the body as well as the skin, including blood vessels, joints, the digestive system, and occasionally the lungs, heart, and kidneys. Symptoms can vary from person to person, depending on what part of the body is affected. But commonly, the symptoms include Raynard's phenomenon. This is where the fingers or toes turn white, then blue in the cold, and then red as the blood flow returns. This is caused by narrowing of the blood vessels. It's possible to have Raynard's without having scleroderma, but most people with scleroderma will have symptoms of Raynard at some time. And it's often one of the first symptoms to appear. Other possible symptoms include thickening and hardening of the skin on the hands, arms, and face. Stiffness and pain in the muscles and or the joints, swelling of hands and feet, especially in the morning, thinning of pads um, at the fingertips. Small white chalky lumps called calcium deposits under the skin, also, indigestion or heartburn may be common, diarrhea or constipation, shortness of breath or reduced ability to exercise, kidney problems and high blood pressure. The progress of this condition is different for everyone. For most people, scleroderma starts slowly affecting just a few parts of the body, gradually getting worse but usually become stable after a few years. Some people find their symptoms improve in summer, but become worse in winter. So the causes of scleroderma, like other autoimmune conditions, are not well known. It's thought to be a combination of genetic and environmental factors. So the diagnosis can be a bit of a process. There's no single test to diagnose scleroderma. So the diagnostic process will include uh, the taking of a medical history, physical examination, and other tests um, which are often included to check involvement of other areas of the body as well, include blood tests, x-rays, scans, possibly breathing and heart checks and skin biopsies. 
The treatments, again, um, are very individual, and, and this includes medications that may be prescribed as well. They're very much based on managing the specific symptoms, so can vary from person to person. Lifestyle management um, is, of course, also a really important part of managing symptoms, improving well-being, and reducing flares. I'm going to touch on some of the key aspects of self-management, but I'm also going to let you know about other ways to get more information and support, including uh, support from those with a lived experience of scleroderma, which is often a really useful and supportive way to, um, to have tips and um, real experiences of what is useful. So we'll just touch on some of the key aspects of self-management. And we know, of course, that healthy exercise and healthy nutrition a really important part of managing health and well-being generally. So exercise is um, a really key way to manage with this condition also. It's about keeping your joints flexible, improving blood flow, also really important for your emotional well-being and mental health, like releasing those feel-good endorphins. Depending um, what and how you're affected by the condition will, um, and also what motivates you around exercise will be um, part of the choices that you make. It may be helpful to see a physiotherapist. Also, programs like Green Prescription can be really helpful if you're not sure where to start with exercise or what's available in your community. The Green Prescription is a national program and it does vary about how it's provided in different communities. But you can ask your uh, practice, your uh, GP or your practice nurse to send a referral and you should at least have a telephone consultation um, around some of the opportunities and appropriate exercise options for you. I'm going to come back to nutrition in, in a moment, just to talk about um, managing Raynards, of course. So some of the key things there are avoiding, where possible, exposure to cold and sudden temperature change changes. Keep your body warm, obviously, and protect your hands and feet with gloves and warm socks. Looking after your skin is really important. Avoiding things like strong detergents that can irritate your skin. So keeping your skin um, clean and well lubricated to prevent the dryness and um, an infection. Managing stress, really, really important. It's obviously stressful living with a long-term health condition like scleroderma, and we can't help the stresses that life often throws our way. And this year has been a very difficult year for lots of reasons. So it's really important to find um, and develop some stress management tools that work for you. It may be learning more about um, some breathing techniques, some relaxation techniques. So finding also ways and keeping energy for things that activities um, that you find really relaxing and engaging and absorbing, often called distraction, um, can be a really um, key way to also support your stress management. So just coming back to healthy nutrition, Obviously, um, a really uh, key part of our health and well-being, as I mentioned, for some people with scleroderma, maybe eating small meals often may be a um, useful way to manage some of the digestive upsets that can be common. We also have one of our peer support volunteers, and I'll talk about our peer support program in a moment. Um, but one of our peer support volunteers is a, a dietitian, and she has a few um, key uh, tips that I will just um, touch on for now. Um, so she suggests that getting your nutrients basically from a healthy diet, if possible, 
but she does talk about how um, because of malabsorption issues, it may be um, that you need supplementation, for example, uh, for a general multivitamin, um, calcium, vitamin D and folic acid. But really important to perhaps um, check with your doctor or your community pharmacist rather than perhaps randomly um, trying a whole variety or spending a lot of money. Um, so try to get uh, clear about what specific um, supplementation, if any, is, is useful for you. Um, and as our peer support volunteer also reminds us that everyone nutrition needs are different, depending on your age, your activity, your complications, medications that you're on. So um, yeah, also asking, and this does vary from DHB to DHB, but um, it's more, this opportunity is more accessible in some DHBs, but asking for your perhaps your rheumatologist or your GP for a referral to a dietitian um, can, can be really helpful. Okay. So oh, as I mentioned, um, at Arthritis New Zealand, one of the opportunities we have for support is through our peer support program. And it's often um, a really valuable, useful experience for people to talk to others um, who have a lived experience of the same condition. So if you're interested in um, following that opportunity up, you can call our 0800 number and ask to speak to Tori. She manages the peer support program. And also to mention, of course, some of you may have seen that on Thursday, we are having what we call a Zoom cafe, and that's with Tori and me and any of you who would like to register and join us for that. And it's really, um, a more informal opportunity to share with each other um, those tips and um, ideas around living and managing this condition. Also want to um, remind you or let you know that in New Zealand there is a scleroderma organisation and their website is there on our page and they also have a, a support, uh, a Facebook support group. So it's, it is really important um, to make use of some of those opportunities. Our 0800 number also is um, where you can phone and ask to speak to one of our arthritis educators about any aspect of living with and managing any arthritis condition. So just before I finish up, and it'll be a chance for you to ask questions in a moment and um, or to share um, tips or information, just need to remind you that uh, Arthritis New Zealand is a charity, uh, a registered charity, and we're very dependent on uh, public donations to enable our services to continue. So if you would like to consider um, donating, you can go to our website and use the donate button. We would really appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, so I'm just going to um, stop now on this page, which is also just a reminder about some of our other online um, opportunities and just see if we have any questions or any comments that people would like to share before we finish up today. This um, webinar, like all of our webinars, will also be available online on our website in our webinar and video section if you know others who would be interested um, to check it out. Okay. Just give it a couple of minutes in case we have any questions.
doesn't look as though we've got anything today, which is absolutely fine. So just one of the other things to say, of course, that um, on our Facebook, we do have a number of specific Facebook groups for different forms of arthritis. We don't have a specific scleroderma one, so I wanted you to know about the scleroderma organisation Facebook and website, but we do have a general arthritis online support group, which um, people find useful and it doesn't, it, it's not a problem, whatever form of arthritis you have, it's sometimes useful to share um, and get tips from people on there as well. Oh, is that a question? Let's see. Oh, okay. So, oh, no, I don't think we have. I don't think we have any questions here. Oh, okay. Sorry, Heather, I found your question. Hello, Jane, what's your role? Okay, so um, I'm an arthritis educator and basically our role is to support people to understand their diagnosis and also to support people, particularly perhaps with the self-management aspects of living with a long-term condition like arthritis. And I mean, that covers a whole variety of um, issues, obviously. Often what we also do as part of that, and I meant to fill that out a little bit when I was talking, that um, of course understanding whatever form of arthritis you have is fairly important and also developing that relationship with your health team. And health teams obviously vary depending on your condition, but usually when you're living with an inflammatory arthritis, an autoimmune arthritis, of which there are many, um, including scleroderma, often your health team will, of course, include your GP, your practice nurse, usually a rheumatologist, and with scleroderma, it may be that there's other specialists also involved. But, yeah, so we're here just to, um, as I say, to support people around all aspects of their arthritis management. Sometimes people ring us before they're going for a doctor's or a specialist appointment, uh, just to talk about what, what questions would be useful, how to get the best out of their appointments. That's just one aspect of the things that we do um, for people. So I hope that answers your question, Heather. Okay, let's just see if there's anything else. Okay, so hopefully um, a few of you, or if you know anyone who missed um, today, as I said, this will be posted on our website. Oh, no, yes, our website. But um, yeah, we do have that opportunity on Thursday, and we hope there's a few of you who are able to come on between 12 and 1 um, and, yeah, connect with others and, and share your tips and opportunities. That, that would be great. Okay, so we'll catch up with some of you then, um, but feel free to keep connected and use the different opportunities that are there for you to support you as you um, live your journey uh, with scleroderma. Okay, thanks for your time.